All right, so I just wanted to talk through how we do circuit notation. And what I talk about circuit notation is just an easy way of writing down um, what you think is going on inside of a circuit or for writing down rules of a circuit. So I'm going to start off up here with our series circuit. And I just want to draw your attention to these annotations. So we've got an I1, an I2, a V1 and a V2. Just a reminder that I is the symbol for current that is measured in amps and that V is a symbol for potential difference or voltage and it's measured in volts. Whoopsie, nearly misspelled it. OK, so we see here that I1 and we have an I2. Now we know from our experiment that any figure, any number that I have for the ammeter that is in a series circuit or for components that are in series, the current will be the same. So what we say is that I1 would be equal to I2, which would also be equal to the total current inside the uh, the whole circuit. Now what, what are we what are we saying here? Equals to means the same. And the annotation TOT means total. We're saying here that the current in one will be equal to the current in two will be equal to the current in total. So we're saying that I1 is the same as I2, which would be the same as the total current in the circuit. We see here that we've got a V total, a V1 and a V2. I can do the same thing, but remember that in a series circuit, when you have two components or many more, any, any number of components in, in series, that the voltage has to be shared between those two components. It doesn't matter what the numbers are. We'd say that V1 plus V2 would be equal to the total voltage, V total. So V1 is, isn't the same as V2, but we'd say that V2 added to V2 would be the same as V total, and remember that that's for the whole circuit. Same thing as up here. All right, for a parallel circuit then, we're going to do the same thing, but remember that the total current in a parallel circuit splits when you get to a junction, which means that the current in this ammeter will not be necessarily the same as the current in this ammeter. And these two ammeters will definitely not be the same as that one. But I do know that the current is conserved. So whatever current I have in this junction, plus whatever current I have in this junction, will be equal to the total current coming from the potential difference. So I can write my rule again. I'd say that I1 plus I2 is equal to I total. Remembering as well that each coulomb of charge brings around a certain amount of energy. But one volt is equal to one joule per coulomb. So if my total voltage in my circuit is carried by charge, and I have two different junctions here for my charge, then the number of joules per coulomb of charge will be the same. So I can say that V1 is the same as V2, which would be the same as the total total voltage across the circuit. Now let's put some numbers in. So let us say that this is two amps. I can work out the total current and I also know what the reading on this ammeter is going to be, even if I don't have it, because I1, two amps, would be equal to I2, which would be equal to total current. Do the same thing for voltage. Let's say that we have a total voltage of seven volts and V2 I've measured and it tells me that it has four volts. Well, if V1 plus V2 equals V total, then the missing number here is easy to figure out. What number of volts plus four volts would equal seven volts? Well, we rearrange that equation and we see that V1 is equal to whatever that missing number is, which is three volts. For my parallel circuit, let's say that we have a total current of three amps. 
Now we've got two different resistances in these bulbs. They have the same amount of voltage going over them, but they'll have slightly different currents. Say so this has got more resistance than that one, but that doesn't really matter. If I've got one amp in this ammeter, flowing through this ammeter, I can figure out what the missing one is. Because if one amp plus a missing number of amps equals three amps, I just have to figure out what the missing number is. So I2 is equal to two amps, because that's the missing number. If I had six volts showing in this voltmeter, I'd be able to figure out what the other two missing voltages are. Because if six volts is equal to a missing number of volts, which is equal to a missing number of volts. The missing number will be the same because of this rule. So we'd say that V1, V2 is equal to six volts and that V total is equal to six volts too. 